الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد we are continuing our studies within the work our readings and contemplations within the work that is entitled qasas al anbiya that is entitled stories of the prophets as has been offered by the esteemed scholar abu fida uh, Ismail ibn Kathir, may Allah the exalted but so expansive mercy upon his soul, as he passes in the year 774 and Uhijari on what today is this 25th of the blessed month of Ramadan of the year 1442 and Uhijari, coinciding with what is the 7th of the month of May of the year 2021 and Odamani. And we now come to the death of Adam as well as his son Sheath or Seth or the story related to a son Sheath or Seth or at least we have uh, within our scripture and indicators with regards to him. Sheath means the gift of Allah. He was named so because he was recompensed and Habil after he was killed. So he was he was a gift from Allah named as us because he was a recompense for Habil after the death of Habil, after the death of Abel. Abu Dhar, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet وسلم, has said, Allah sent down 104 scriptures meaning 104 heavenly inspired books were revealed. Of those, 50 were upon Sheath, or 50 were upon Seth. Muhammad ibn Ishaq, he said, when death approached Adam, he covenanted with his son Sheath and taught him the hours of the day and the night and the acts of worship to be performed in those hours. He also informed him about the flood that was going to come after him. So this would seem to, to indicate the possibility of Adam السلام, having some prior knowledge or having been revealed to him that there would be a great flood to come. And of course, we now know this to be from the story of Nuh السلام. Ibn Ishaq, also said, it is said that the lineage of all humanity goes back to sheath, and that all other, and that all others of his children passed away without leaving any lineage. Interesting. And Allah knows best. When Adam السلام, died, it was Friday. The angels came to him with fragrance and shroud from Allah, from the heaven, and they consoled his son, Sheath. Ibn Ishaq said that the sun and moon eclipsed for seven days and seven nights. Imam Ahmed's son, Abdullah, and Imam Ahmed here is Ahmed ibn Hanbal. He passes in the year 241, and Hijari and is also the not just the great imam, but also who the Hamadi Madhab has been constructed uh, after. Imam Ahmed's son, Abdullah, reported on the authority of Yahya ibn Damra, a Sa'di, who said, I saw a learned man teaching in Medina, so I inquired about him. People said he is Ubay ibn Ka'b. Ubay, he said, when death approached Adam, السلام, he said to his sons, my sons, I desire for the fruits of Jannah. I desire for the fruits of paradise. They all went in search for it. The angels met them on their way. They were carrying his shroud and fragrance, as well as tools for digging and instruments for measurement. They asked them, O children of Adam, where are you going and what are you searching for? They replied, our father is ill 
and desired the fruits of paradise. The angel said, go back to your father as he is about to die. The angels came to Adam. Then when Eve, Hawa, saw him, she recognized them as having come to take the sword of Adam and then held on to Adam. Adam said, stay away from me as I was born before you. Leave me alone with the angels of my Lord. They took out his soul, washed and shrouded his body and fragranced him. They then prayed on him, dug a grave and placed him in it and filled it with earth. They then said, O children of Adam, this will be your tradition regarding burial, end quote. As regards where was Adam buried, there are different opinions from scholars concerning the, lo the location of his grave. The widespread opinion is that he was buried in India, near the mountain where he had first descended to earth. As per other opinion, he was buried on the mountain of Abu Qubais in Mecca. It is also said that at the time of the flood of Nuh, السلام, Noah, Nuh took him in Hawa in a coffin and buried them in Beit al Maqdis, Jerusalem. Ibn Jarir held this last opinion. And Ibn Jarir, here is Ibn Jarir al Tabari. He passes in the year 310 after the Hijra. We spoke about his scholarship and virtue in previous lesson. Ibn Asakir, great Hadith scholar and historian, Ibn Asakir reported that some people said that Adam's head is near Ibrahim's mosque, while his feet are near the rocks of Beit al-Maqdis, Jerusalem. It is also said that Adam died after Eve by one year. As regards how long Adam lived, we have mentioned earlier in a narration on the authority of Ibn Abbas and Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with them both. In it, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Adam's age, was written in Allahu Mahfuz. Adam's age was recorded in the preserved tablet as 1,000 years. This does not contradict what is in the Torah, that he lived for 930 years. This is because those of Jewish faith uh, distorted the teachings in the Torah while what we have in this truth, while what we have is the truth, that has been protected from any distortion. However, if we assume that Adam's age in the Torah is free from distortion, even then we can combine between that and the authentic Hadith. What is mentioned in the Torah is referring to Adam's stay on earth. This is 930 years of the solar calendar and which makes 957 years of the lunar calendar. The remaining 43 years, in order for his age to reach 1,000 years, is his period of stay in paradise. Ibn Asaki reported that Taw al-Khurasani said, when Adam died, all creation cried over him, wept over him for seven days. In quote, after the death of Adam, his son Sheaf, Seth, took charge of his mission, meaning in prophethood. Sheaf is a prophet. As reported by Ibn Habban on the authority of Abu Dhar, Sheaf became a prophet and 50 scriptures were revealed to him. Prior to his death, Sheaf entrusted the mission to his son Enos, who carried it after him. Then after him, his son Kenan, and then his son Mahlail took charge of the mission in the succession of prophethood. Mahlail is the one whom the Persians claimed to be the king of the seven regions. He was the first to cut trees, build cities and great castles, Mahlail. He built the city of Babylon, 
in the farthest city of Sus, a city in Khuzestan, where he where, where, where lies the grave of the prophet Daniel, the prophet Daniel, alayhim salam al jamir He overpowered Iblis and his army and then scattered them into the mountains and the valleys and killed a huge number of them. He had a great crown, delivered sermons to the people, and his rule lasted for 40 years. Is this guy the same as Nebron? 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 No, not Nebron. Uh, Nimrod? Yeah. Nimrod? No, not Nimrod. After his death, his son Yedit took the charge of his mission. Prophet passed down again. And then his son, Enoch, or Humuch, different name, same person, who was known by yet a third name, Idris, which is what we are more familiar with, also a prophet. This now concludes the story of Adam. We now move to the second chapter, and this is now the story of Enoch, or the story of Humuch, or as we call them, call him the prophet Idris. Allah, the glorious and the exalted, he is stated in the 19th chapter, verses 56 through 57. And this brings us into the chapter Medium. And mentioned in the book, Idris, he was a truthful prophet. So there's no doubt concerning his prophethood. Our Lord explicitly states that he's a prophet. And we raised him high in the heavens. Allah, the glorious and the exalted, praised Idris, Enoch, in this verse, and described him as a prophet and as truthful. As many of the genealogists have mentioned, our prophet's ancestral line meets him. This is a reference to the fact that all prophets share the same bloodline from Adam all the way through to Muhammad, uh, alayhi salam al jamia After Adam and Sheath, meaning Seth. He was the first man to be sent as a prophet, peace be upon them all. This is a view. Another view is what was mentioned previously, that prophet was passed on to the generations that we have mentioned. Ibn Ishaq said that he was the first man to write with the pen. So now writing with the pen starts with Idris. He was born while Adam was still alive and lived with him for 308 years of his life. So this now is indicating the length and life of Idris. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and we raise him high in the heaven. The explanation of this verse has been mentioned in Al-Bukhari in Muslim. The hadith is concerning the Isra and the Mi'raj, the nice journey in the ascension of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The hadith says, the prophet passed by him, Idris, on the fourth heaven. Ibn Jirir al-Tabri reported on the, authority, uh, on the authority of Hilal Ibn Yasaf, who said, Ibn Abbas asked Ka'ab, may Allah be pleased with all of them, in my presence, what is the meaning of the verse? And when we raise him high in the heaven, Ka'ab, he replied, may Allah be pleased with him, Allah revealed to Idris, I would raise for you every day the same amount of the deeds of all of Adam's children. Allahu Akbar. Perhaps what he meant was referring to the deeds of his time only. So Idris wanted to increase his deeds. When a friend from among the angels visited him, Idris said to him, Allah has revealed to me such and such. So could you please speak to the angel of death so that I can increase my deeds? He's asking for extension in his lifespan. The angel then carried him on his wings and went up into the heaven. When they passed by the fourth heaven, they met the angel of death who was descending. The angel spoke to him regarding what Idris had spoken to him before. The angel of death said, where is Idris? He replied, he is upon my back. The angel of death said, how amazing. I was sent to seize his soul 
and was told to meet him in the fourth heaven. I kept thinking, how could I seize it in the fourth heaven when he is on earth? It shows that the angels do not have knowledge of the unseen. Then he took his soul out. This is what is meant in this verse. And we raised him high in the heaven. Imam Bukhari said that Ibn Mas'ud and Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them both, said that Ilyas is Idris, that the prophet Ilyas and Idris are one and the same person, not different prophets. Their evidence is from the hadith concerning the night journey, wherein it is stated, when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed by him, he said, welcome to the pious brother and pious prophet. We see that the Prophet ﷺ did not say as Adam, as Adam and Ibrahim said, welcome to the pious prophet and pious son. Thus, Ibn Mas'ud and Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them both, say, uh, they say, were he to be in his lineage, he should have said as they both said. This evidence is not conclusive though, because it could be that the narrator did not remember it properly, or he may have said, he may have said that to show his humility and affection toward him. Similarly, there could be other explanations for his invalid invalidity as evidence. Close chapter two. Chapter three, the story of Nuh alayhi salam, Noah. First, his lineage. He is Nuh ibn Lamech, Ibn Methuselah, Ibn Idris, Ibn Yarit, Ibn Mahlail, Ibn Qinan, or Kenan, Ibn Enos, Ibn Sheath, or Seth, Ibn Adam, may Allah be pleased with all of them. And we should cite here that with regards to this lineage, um, going this far back into the history of humanity, then we are not necessarily saying that it is a direct lineage father for child, not necessarily. But what we are saying is these are the nodes that we still have recorded from that lineage. So it is possible that there are some gaps that, 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 that are in this lineage, but we do have the major nodes in that lineage. Nur alayhi salam, he was born after 126 years of the death of Adam, as Ibn Jirir and others have mentioned. According to what we have mentioned from the Torah, there were 146 years between the death of Adam and the birth of Nur alayhi salam. Ibn Habban reported in his book, and in Sahih, on the authority of Abu Umama, may Allah be pleased with him, that a man asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and herein lies my point why I just mentioned what I mentioned, O Messenger of Allah, was Adam a prophet? The Prophet replied, yes, a prophet who spoke to Allah, or rather a prophet who Allah spoke to, meaning he spoke to directly. It is not only Musa Alayhi Salam that Allah spoke to directly, but Kalim Allahu Musa Taklima, and Allah spoke to Musa directly as Allah mentions, but he also spoke to Adam directly, and he also spoke to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa alayhi wa sallam jami'an directly. Then how much time was there between the two of them? Meaning between, between Adam and Nuh. Uh, the Prophet replied, there were 10 Qarun between the two of them. So a Qarun can be a generation or it can be a, a century. And if we're saying that it is a, a generation, then the length of time is shorter than that of, of a century, perhaps 20 or 30 years or so, every new generation that comes, uh, or perhaps a longer period of time based upon their lifespans, possible. But now if we're saying a qarun, a qarun is a century which is now 100 years. If we do 100 years, 10 times over, we're speaking to 1,000 years. So perhaps it is now 1,000 years, but also, this type of language in the in the language of the Arab, when they utilize estimations like this, you say uh, you say to a person, "Hold on for a second. You don't literally mean a second. You wait a minute. You don't literally mean a, a minute. 
It took I, it took a thousand times for me to do it. You don't literally mean a thousand times. You just mean that it is a very large number. So in their speech as well, in the speech of the Arab, they make these types of mentions, and it may not be the literal number, but they're showing that it was a very long period of time and not necessarily a specific number. Uh, Imam al-Bukhari reported on the authority of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, that the Prophet wasallam said, there were 10 qanam, there were 10 centuries between Adam and Nuh, all living according to Islam. Meaning that there was no shirk between the time of Adam and Nuh alayhi salam. Humanity only knew Islam, humanity only knew Tawheed, humanity only knew submission to Allah, humanity only knew monotheism. Shirk did not exist amongst humanity up to the time of Nuh alayhi salam. And now the, the Ibn Kathir says, if what is meant by a qarun is 100 years, as is mentioned in the hadith, then there must be at least 1,000 years between them, since there are 10 qarun between them. However, a qarun could be more than this, and this is what we were just iterating. This is supported by the fact that Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him and his father, said that those 10 centuries are referring to when the people lived according to Islam. So there probably were later centuries when people did not live according to the Islamic teachings and which is required and which require a messenger to be sent. So when we say that there were between Adam and Nuh alayhi salam, there was Islam and there was Tawheed, meaning up to the time of Nuh, meaning that there were righteous men who lived prior to Nuh alayhi salam. And they were upon Islam and they were upon Tawheed. And then when we're going to come to the story, but just so that we know what we're talking about. Uh, after their passing, then the people, for reason that we'll come to, inshallah, are encouraged to raise uh, statues in their stead as a reminder to the people of their righteousness and of their enjoying the good and forbidding the evil so that the people can maintain that level of piety by their, by their reminder. But then after this generation passes away, then the people are now encouraged to begin worshiping these statues. And there is a story in this that we're summarizing, but we don't want to take from the story of Nuh alayhi salam, so we'll come to it. And then they begin worshiping them. So this is when shirk starts. So now imagery through statues is the initial gateway to polytheism uh, amongst humanity, to shirk within humanity. It starts here. And now, once the people be, begin committing shirk, now Nuh alayhi salam raises up as a prophet and a messenger to invite them back to Islam after they're having uh, left Islam due to their polytheism and shirk. Okay. However, if the meaning of a Quran is a generation of people, as is sometimes mentioned in the Quran, then there could be thousands of years between Adam and Nuh. This is because the generations of people who were before Nuh used to live for a long period of time. They're looking, living for longer periods of time and they're having more children than we have present day. They're living longer and producing more. The Quran says, and how many generations, how many Qurun have we destroyed after Nuh? And another verse says, then after them, we raised up a Qurun. Then after them, we raised up a generation. Also, the verse, and many qurun, many generations between them. And lastly, the verse, and how many qarun, how many generations have we destroyed before them? Indicating the possible meanings of the word qarun. The Prophet wasallam used the word qarun to mean a generation. And this is the renowned hadith that we're all familiar with. The Prophet wasallam, says, khayrun nas qarni, thumanadhini yiluluhum, thumanadhini yiluluhum. The best of the people are my qarun. The best of the people are my generation. And then those who come after them, and then those who come after them, the Prophet Wasallam states. The best of the people are my generation, the Prophet Wasallam and the companions. And then those who come after them, meaning the tabi'un, the successors. And then those who come after them, the third generation, the itba'a tabi'i, the successors to those successors. So just as a brief point of benefit, because the Prophet wasallam bore witness to the excellence of these generations in their Islam, in their piety, in their spirituality, in their 
academics in their knowledge, we as well would then seek to emulate them in those areas of the faith of Islam because we bear witness to what the Prophet said and bore witness to in their excellence. Anyhow, it is known that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Nur when his people started worshiping idols and false gods and treaded the path of darkness and ignorance. Thus, Allah sent him as a mercy for his servants. Nuh was the first messenger to be sent upon this earth. This fact is seen in a hadith concerning the situation of the people on the day of resurrection and when they will go to certain prophets and messengers in order to start the judgment of that day. This is a reference to the hadith of Shafa'a, the hadith of intercession that we spoke to at length during our study of the story of Adam alayhi salam. Ibn Jubayr and others have mentioned that the people he was sent to were called Binu Rasid, that this is now a possible name of the people that Nuh was sent, sent to, Binu Rasib or the tribe of Rasib. The scholars differed concerning the, concerning the age of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam when he was sent as a messenger. A number of opinions were put forward. Among these are that he was 50 years old or 350 and even 480. Ibn Jarir mentioned these and stated that all three were narrated from Ibn Abbas at some point or another. May Allah be pleased with him and his father. And um, it's relative and it's appropriate that we mention here. We, we, we commonly hear about Nuh in 950 years. So then many of us think that he lived for 950 years. He did, but he didn't. What do we mean by that? He did live for 950 years, yes. But that marker is not denoting the entire of his lifespan. That is denoting the entire of the time that he's inviting his people to Islam, not the entire of his lifespan. His lifespan extends beyond 950 years. But this is the period of time that he was dedicated to the da'wah of his people, to the to apologetics with the people with his people and inviting them to the fold of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his story and the story of his people in the number of verses in the Quran. He also mentioned how he sent a flood to those who rejected his call, meaning those who remained as non-Muslims, those who remained as kufar. Similarly, he mentioned how he saved Nuh and those on his ark, meaning the believers, those who embrace Islam. All these events are mentioned in different chapters of the Quran. Some of these are in the following chapters. Al-A'raf, Yunus, Hud, Al-Anbiya, Al-Mu'minun, Al-Shu'ara, Al-Ankabut, Al-Safat, Al-Qamar, and of course the entire of the chapter that is named after him, Nuh. Now we will mention these. And as we mentioned earlier in Ibn Kathir's format, he will mention the verses of the Quran first that we have concerning a given prophet. And after he, after he has exhausted those verses, he may then enter into the commentary or scholarship on these verses, starting with the companions and then moving downward throughout scholarship. After he has exhausted the exegesis of the verse, he will then enter into the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, that we have concerning a given prophet. And he will mention the most authentic and most reliable of what we have all the way through that which we may be, may be less reliable. And then, and then after that, he may enter into the Israelite narrations all throughout, uh, mentioning scholarly discourse if there are any differences of opinion on a given matter, or if it is possible that the verses or hadith may carry uh, differing meanings. Allah said in the chapter A'raf, verse 50, verses 59 through 64, and we sent Nuh to his people, and he said, oh my people, worship Allah, you have no God other than him. Truly I fear for you the punishment of a great day. The leaders of his people said, we see that you are in plain error. He said, oh my people, there is no error in me. However, I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. I bring you the messages of my Lord and I advise you and I know from Allah what you do not know. This is revelation. 
Do you wonder that an admonition came to you from your Lord by a man from among you in order that he may warn you and that you may fear Allah and that you may find mercy? But they rejected him. So we rescued him and those with him in the ark, the Safina of Noah, the ark of Noah, of the ark of Noah. And we drowned those who had disbelieved in our signs. This is the great flood. Indeed, they were a blind people, meaning spiritually blind. And said in Surah Yunus, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, verses 72 through 73, and relate to them the story of Nur. He said to his people, O oh my people, if my stay amiss you, and my reminding you the signs of Allah has become hard on you, then I have put my trust in Allah. So gather your plan and get your associates together. Thereafter, let not your plan be ambiguous upon you. Then pass your judgment against me and give me no respite. Then if you turn away, I have not asked you for any reward for my reward is only from Allah. And I have been commanded to be of those who are Muslims, but they rejected him. So we rescued him and those with him in the ark and made them inherit to earth, meaning the people that were with Nur. This is now the repopulation of humanity after their, after their destruction. And we drowned those who rejected our signs. See then what was the end of those who were warned. And we have in the chapter Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and this is a long series of verses here. We are now going through verses 25 through 49, the chapter Hud. And we have sent Nuh to his people. And he said, I'm a clear warner to you that you worship none but Allah. Indeed, I fear for you the punishment of a painful day. But the leaders of the disbelievers from among his people said, the Kufar, we do not see you except a man like ourselves. You're a man and we're men. Hmm. And we see none following you except the most low of us. And this is the case with the prophets. Often we find the lower echelon of society believing in the prophets first before the upper echelon of society. And then the upper echelon will come later. Nor do we think that you have any superiority over us. Rather, we think you are liars. He said, oh, my people, inform me if I have a clear sign from my Lord and he has bestowed his mercy upon me, which has been obscured from your sight. Shall we compel you to accept it when you are averse to it? Oh, my people, I do not ask you of any reward for this. My reward is only with Allah. I shall not drive away those who believe. Indeed, they shall meet their Lord. But I see you are an ignorant people. Oh, my people, who would save me from Allah if I drive them away. Will you then not understand? And I do not say to you that I possess the treasures of Allah, or that I know the unseen, or that I am an angel. Nor do I say to those your eyes despise that Allah will not grant them any good. Allah knows best what is in their souls. And if I did that, I would be among the unjust. He's describing the nature of a prophet, the duty, the occupation of a messenger, and what they should be expecting from a prophet and a messenger. They said, O Nuh, certainly you have disputed with us and have prolonged our disputation. So bring now what you have threatened us with. If you are among the truthful people, bring the bring this punishment of Allah. If what you're saying is true, he said, Allah will bring it to you if he wills. And you are not someone who can stop Allah. Meaning Allah does what he wills. He doesn't follow your orders. All my advice will be of no benefit to you. If Allah has ordained for you to be left astray, even if it is my desire to advise you. Meaning, I still want the good for you, but I cannot become I cannot become come between you and Allah's commandment. I can't stop that. He is your Lord, and to him you shall return. 
Or do they say he has forged it himself? Say, O Noor, if I had forged it myself, I shall bear the consequences and I'm clear of the crime you are committing. Meaning, I, knew, I didn't make this up and I'm free from your disbelief in Allah. And it was revealed to Noor, alayhi salam, no more of your people should believe in you other than those who have already believed. So now Allah informs him. Those that were going to embrace Islam as Muslims, they've already believed. They're Muslims. They're with you now. They believe in your messengership and they believe in me, meaning Allah. So do not grieve longer at their misdeeds. Construct the ark under our eyes and according to our revelation. And do not speak to me further on behalf of those who have been unjust. They shall be drowned. So he began to construct the ark. Whenever the leaders of his people passed him by, they mocked at him. Nuh said, if you mock us now, we shall mock you similarly. And you shall soon come to know who will have a punishment which will disgrace him and who will be afflicted with inevitable and lasting calamity. We're going to pause now the reading of, this ver of these verses and add a commentary. We find in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Nuh was giving da'wah for so long. He was inviting the people, attempting to, to warn them, give them, and, and save them for so long that a man would come to his child, point at Nuh, and say, my grandfather used to warn me from following him. That's how long Nuh was giving down. Until when our command came and the fountains of the earth gushed forth, we said, load a pair of every kind in it and your family, except the one against who the world has already gone forth. And take also those who have believed. However, only a few believe with him. He said, board the ark. In the name of Allah, it will move and shall cast anchor. And a pair, meaning of the animals of that day. Indeed, a pair of the animals of that day so that they can reproduce. Indeed, my Lord is all forgiving, most merciful. And the ark sailed with them upon waves like mountains. That's how much it is flooded. That the earth... Uh, or, 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 or that the water began filling the earth. And now the waves themselves are largest mountains. The water is now covering up the mountains. Nur called out to his son, who had kept himself at a distance, meaning disbelieved in him. Oh, my son, board with us and do not be with the disbelievers. His son said, I will take refuge in the mountain that will protect me from the water. Nur said, there is no protector today from Allah's punishment, except that he should have mercy. Then the waves came between them, between Nuh and his son, and he was among those who drowned. And then it was said, O earth, swallow your water, and O sky, cease your rain. The water abated, and the command was completed, and the ark came to rest upon Mount Judy. It was said, away with those who do wrong. Nuh supplicated to his Lord and said, O oh my Lord, my son is from my family, and your promise is true, and you are the most just of the judges. Allah said, O oh Nuh, he is not from your family. His conduct is unrighteous. Even now at this point, after his son's passing, Nuh is still attempting to intercede with Allah on his son's behalf to save his son's soul. This is how much we should care for our own children and our lineage. So then he says to him, Allah said, O oh, Nur, he is not from your family. His conduct is unrighteous. So do not ask me about that of which you have no knowledge. I admonish you. I admonish you, lest you should become one of the ignorant. He said, this is Nur, my Lord, in you I seek refuge, lest I should ask you anything of which I have no knowledge. So if you do not forgive me, have mercy upon me. I shall be one of the losers. This is how the prophets will seek forgiveness. Not for, not for committing a sin. They will seek forgiveness out of possibly being ungrateful to Allah. 
the possibility of being ungrateful, they now seek forgiveness. This is the level of seeking forgiveness of the prophets. Very far from us, for we are seeking forgiveness for our sins, or if we're even if we're good, if we're righteous, we're seeking Allah's forgiveness not for sins, but because we've fallen short in acts of obedience. We didn't pray a voluntary prayer. We didn't give charity that we could have given. These type of things, the righteous seek forgiveness for. But now the prof the prophets, their seeking of forgiveness is not because they fell short of the mark in, in, in obedience and definitely not because of sin. They are seeking forgiveness out of gratitude to Allah to Barakul Ta'ala and out of fear of ingratitude. Allahu Akbar. And in any regard, he states here, it was said, O Nuh, descend in peace from us, meaning from Allah, and with blessing upon you and upon the nations of those with you. And some nations we shall give them enjoyment for a time, and then we shall afflict them with a painful punishment. This is Nuh receiving revelation that humanity will now be repopulated through him. And this repopulation of humanity, there'll be those who believe and those who disbelieve, those who are righteous and those who are unrighteous. Those who will be rewarded and those who will be punished. Such is one of the stories of the unseen, which we reveal to you, which neither you nor your people knew of this before. So be patient. Ultimately, the pious will be successful. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala revealing this to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These details, they did not have knowledge of this level of, of detail. And we also learn here a point in piety and in spirituality. Our Lord is promising us that if we are patient, if we maintain our obedience to Allah, that regardless of what our circumstances are currently, regardless of what our circumstances look like, the end, in the end, success will be for the righteous will be for the pious. The author continues on with a, a long series of, of verses concerning the story of Nuh, but we will continue the reading of these verses next week, inshallah ta'ala. Hadha wa lahu alam wa sallallahu ala Muhammad. Questions? What country was he in? Long as best. I don't know. And, um, how long did it take him to build this ark? I don't know. Okay. And um, it, it seems though the Quran, as well as the Bible, and you see. It's like the prophets, they all they only come into one group of people. Mm. But yet, as you said, is is many nations. Correct. And then you say there's many over a hundred prophets and you what I think you said three hundred and something prophets. 124,000 prophets, three hundred and fifteen messengers. Yeah. So um and it seems like these but you also say the prophets or the messengers come from one bloodline. Bloodline. So what we can say, so um, at least I haven't come across anything solid in any of our scriptures that would indicate exactly where Noah was, right? I have not. Uh, maybe someone else has. Say but uh, I haven't come across anything solid in our scriptures concerning where Noah was myself, right? Uh, perhaps someone else has, but I have not. Um, all this being said, though, we do know, um, as was mentioned very briefly here, that Babylon is now the cradle of civilization. And civilization is kind of expanding out from, from this epicenter. Um, how far from Babylon? Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Babylon is modern day Iraq. That's correct. So humanity is now spreading out from this point. So by the time that humanity reaches the generation of Noah, how far did they get from that epicenter? Allah knows best, right? Allah knows best. Um, one might uh, safely posit somewhere out into where we call the Middle East, up into the the where, where we, somewhere into the Middle East part of Asia, um, over into Europe, maybe as far as Africa, maybe. But Allah knows best. Allah knows best. Hard to tell. Um, there are some historians. There are some historians 
who um, have some indicators, again, not conclusive, but have some indicators that uh, Mount Judy uh, and, and where the Ark landed is in modern day Turkey. But Alano's best. Alano's best. Well, that's in the Quran. Mm. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, right. Sorry, sir. Sheikh Mujahid, I believe you're, you're at the age you want Sheikh status now. Better uh. So, with regards to the bloodline, so we've taken the bloodline back to Adam. Yes. If all of the prophets are coming through that bloodline, can we identify which of Adam's children that bloodline emanates from? A sheath or Seth. So they all, okay. Mm -hmm. but, but now, for, further to your point, we do know that Allah Tabarakul Ta'ala says, Rasulin, and it, but Allah was Tahut. Allah states, and we have sent to every nation, every people, a messenger proclaiming to worship Allah alone and abstain from worshiping other than Allah. So every nation of people, uh, place, time period, there has to have been a messenger that was sent to them at some point in time as humanity is spreading out. But who exactly they are, our Lord also informs us that. There are some prophecies he's informed us of and other ones he is not, right? So the ones that we know about, we have we have either a lot or some of their detail. Sometimes we just have a name, but we have to know as well that there are many others that we weren't informed about. If there are 124,000 prophets, we only have 25 of them mentioned by name in the Quran. That's a drop in the bucket in compared to 124,000, right? And then if we look at the others that are mentioned, uh, throughout you know, indicators in the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, um, it would be a good exercise to do. I haven't counted out the number, but I believe like in the, within our scriptures, I don't believe that we're gonna get up to 100 total or name. Just one of the ones that are just named at some point, right? And 100 compared to 124,000, it's, it's, it's a drop in the bucket. But we have to know and believe that messengers were sent out to all of, all of humanity generally, right? And if, if, if there is a people that for whatever reason, the message of Islam did not reach them in a fashion that they are able to understand it to the point that they can make a decision for themselves after recognizing it's a truth, whether they want to embrace it or not, then such people are, uh, such people are under the will of Allah. Such people will meet Allah on the day of resurrection and Allah will uh, grant them the opportunity at that time to make a decision to obey Allah or to disobey him and uh, seal their fate either way, right? And perhaps this gives us some degree of um, hope for many of our, our elder relatives who have passed away, um, who we know uh, that, or we can strongly posit in Alano's best, that perhaps the message of Islam didn't reach them in their lifetimes. So perhaps there will be those that will be under Allah's will on the on the day of resurrection. And we pray and hope that they make the right decision at that time. Not in America. You said, said not in America, huh? <laughs> because we have libraries. <laughs> we have libraries here in America. Mm. Even if, uh, like this brother, uh, Allah took his soul, uh, his name is Jamal Ladeen. Mm. Uh, back in the 40s or the 50s, when the, the nation was out there, mm -hmm. he was introduced, he didn't accept. Mm -hmm. He went to a place called Library. <laughs> he looked up Islam in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Mm -hmm. and he read it. Mm -hmm. And he said, What this book is saying, they have not practiced in that. SubhanAllah. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't no Elijah Muhammad in the encyclopedia back then. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So he found the truth in the library. Mm -hmm. So uh, he converted to, he had, a, he was in New York at the time. But he Mashallah. Had, he found some Sunni Muslims. Mashallah. Right. What I can say is, uh, and, and we know that um, many of us who, who came here during the transatlantic slave trade, and we were dropped in different areas, some North America, South America, others in the, uh, in the islands and such, um, or the, the West Indies and such, um, Many of us at that time that were coming over were Muslims, right? Some estimate 18 to 30 percent. Some may have higher percentages that were Muslims when we came here. But barring that period of time, 
because you know, we know there was a period where uh, the people began to lose their, their faith as they integrated into the, the uh, Western society or American society. All right, barring that, um, it will be interesting discussion. And, and, and me, myself, just in discussions with people and um, attempting to date Islam going backward from where we are now, uh, I've come across Islam in America going back to 1903, right? Actual Orthodox Sunni Muslims, back to 1903, myself. Uh, I'll be interested to know um, yourself as a historian or, or others that have been uh, raised and born Muslims, we, we have some here, if you all have been able to um, come across, even if it's through oral record, uh, Islam going back further than 1903. That's the furthest I was able to trace it back, right? And so then we have a gap between the translated slave trade and then 1903, right? Can we close that gap any any further in that period of time, right? Uh, but if you ever come across any information in that regard, I'm definitely interested to to know. Well, then, you know, Alex Haley, he traced his roots all the way back to Africa. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. just genuine. Right. You know? But now the people being Muslims generation for generation, somewhere along that line, many of us became Christians in, in, well, in the transatlantic right. trade trade when we were Muslims at first. You couldn't practice the Dindy game. Correct. Correct. But now when we come to, at least from my perspective now, in my, in my uh, right, if you want to call it research, to 1903, people now in America have Orthodox Islam again, right? Well, we, we know uh, some of the slaves that came into transatlantic slave trade were Orthodox Muslims, right? Uh, 500 years ago or so. And we know in 1903, we have Orthodox Muslims again. Now that what, gap in between. What, what what state is this? And I, I don't want to say the, the family's name either. Um, what state did they tell me they were originally from? I, I don't recall the state. I don't recall Carolina the state. Or Virginia, because right I didn't outside of North Carolina is a little, it's a little island. Mm -hmm. And I heard there was a Muslim mm -hmm. uh, group there. Right. Yeah, there's the Geechee there. tribe there, and then those islands off the coast of North Carolina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Well, Awesome, brother. Um, you know, when you look at the stories, the, 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 the prophets is just coming to one group of people over and over. Look how many prophets came to the Israelites, but and they reject them and gave them a hard time. But at the same time, there's other people in the world that you don't know maybe these other prophets of messengers came mm -hmm. to them but you correct. don't know their story we don't have their details that's correct and then it seems though with all these prophets and messengers as you say you can say that all were failures <laughs> that's a that's a different discussion we, we can't say that <laughs> yes you can i mean you can say the the only really video <laughs> but you, you, you only you can say the only really 